Kara Eastman uh, ran in uh, Nebraska. She was running against a Democrat who was more of an establishment corporate Democrat, uh, more of a conservative, uh, sometimes they mistakenly called him centrist Democrat. And he was already uh, a representative before. He had won a House seat before in Nebraska. So of course, everybody said, oh, he's gonna win. Now we don't know what this progressive Kara Eastman is doing in the race, it's crazy. You just bow your head and let the other guy win. Now, there was a problem with that plan. Because uh, Carrie Eastman didn't intend on losing, she intended <laughs> on winning, and she did. She won the primary, <laughs> and she joins us now. Uh, Kara, great to have you back. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I have to point out one thing, though, and you might be able to to this. My name is Kara. I have one of those names that looks closely another. All right. Well, finally, after all this time, I get it right. Uh, and <laughs> unlike. <laughs> I like the president. I don't mind being correct. We like to get it right. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Cara, it, tell us how you did it. Uh, so, I, I know that you know you were um, a just Democrat and you ran uncorrupted. So, no corporate PAC money. So, obviously, a, a disadvantage there in terms of the finances, at least. A wonderful advantage in principles and in grassroots energy. But how did you wind up uh, winning a race that that most of the uh, Washington thought you had no chance at? We did it just honestly by going out and talking to voters at their doors. We knocked on over 60,000 doors in the primary. And we, and most importantly, we asked people what they were concerned about. We asked them the things that they wanted in a representative. And we listened to them. And, there, and so we actually had data of our own that showed that I was going to win, which is why we were relatively confident. Apparently, not everybody else was. So every time there's an upset, there's a knocking on door story. 60,000 doors in a congressional district is bananas. That's crazy. Yep. That's an <laughs> unbelievable amount of doors to knock on. So I'm curious about the mechanics of it. How many volunteers did you have and how long did it take? Well, we, we actually had three or two and a half paid field organizers, myself, and uh, we had about 30 or 40 volunteers. We had some volunteers that started. We, we launched the campaign a year ago, and we had volunteers that were with us from the beginning out every weekend, knocking doors with me. So it was a lot of hard work. I mean, I, I in the last month uh, before the primary, I knocked on doors for about five or six hours a day. But we felt like that was the way that we were going to, one, spread the message because not everybody had heard of me. I mean, being on TV um, and doing mail pieces and, and getting some earned media helped. But I think most importantly, we just went out and talked to people and we were willing to have hard conversations with people because it's not that easy to go and knock on people's doors and ask them for their vote. Sometimes they didn't necessarily like our message, but most of the time people were just excited that the candidate was at their door asking them questions. Oh, I love that story. Look, I try, I try to learn lessons so that we can get better and better as progressives at winning um, and wouldn't that be great? So one of the lessons I'm getting yeah. from this is start early. And the good news is, so. Uh, you know, 2018, we had to all start from uh, square one. You know, our revolution didn't exist, just Democrats didn't exist. All these major groups didn't even exist in 2016, right? But we've got a great head start on 2020. So if, if Cara, you were to make it into Congress, and then we had a, a, for example, a just Democratic caucus, and then we would have a solid two years to start for 2020. And we got all those people to learn from what you did and have them knock on 60,000 doors in their districts. Man, you want to talk about a wave. It would be a tsunami like no one's right. ever seen, actual people power. So uh, I, I hope that you lead that path uh, towards them, so uh, for them. So let's let's talk about uh, the Republican now, because you're, you're past the primary. Uh, who's your Republican opponent in the general election? Uh, his name is Don Bacon. He is a first-term Republican incumbent, and uh, he his voting record has been almost 100% with Trump. Um, and what's your strategy uh, for taking him down? And before that, actually, let me just ask how um, what's the composition of the district? You know, for the people at home, if you don't know things like the Cook Political Report, which I've got other issues with, they'll rank the districts as. Plus five, meaning the Republicans have a five point advantage generally, or a minus, or Democrats plus five, et cetera. So, what is this district, Car? 
Well, I mean, they had it as toss up before the primary and now they're saying lean Republican. Um, but when we look at the demographics of the district, when we look at the, the voters, it's actually fairly split between Republicans and Democrats. The Republicans have a slight edge, but we also have about 100,000 registered independents in the district and they break two to one for Democrats. And really what we haven't done is, is reached out to those independents who are either frustrated with the parties or just want to be a little bit incognito because they are in a red state, but they should have a voice too. And I feel like a campaign like ours can reach out to those voters as well. Okay, so now that I know that, uh, and I know that we talked to you about it before, but that was during the primary, like I said. So uh, I think Kara's seat is a bellwether and is going to tell us on election night in 2018 how things are going. Because in a, and it is a toss up. The Cook Political Report has a, has a massive bias that I'll explain in a second. If Kara wins in that district, that means the wave has begun. It doesn't mean that the wave is going to be overwhelming. We would know that if Caro was in a plus 15 district and she won, right? But uh, I can't wait to see how our door knocking strategy is going to work in the general election. And I can't wait to prove the establishment wrong. And I think she's going to be a, a perfect candidate to do that with. But you never know until the election day, right? So the, my, my issue with uh, Cook Political Report is the minute a progressive wins, they mark down the chance of the Democratic Party winning the seat. Now, do they do that based on polling? No. Do they do it based on any data? No. They just go, oh, progressives are less likely to win because that's what all my friends in Washington say. Now, otherwise, Cook Political Report does an interesting service and it's an interesting product that John and I, Michael Shore, I'm sure we all read it, right? But if you're just gonna do things arbitrarily and go, if you're a progressive, I'm marking you way down, that makes no sense at all. You know, Cara, I wonder, I don't know if, you know, you're just in one district, but is there a way of, and not just fighting back against that, but fighting back against all of the bias that the, in my opinion, the establishment media has against progressives? Well, I think the way that we can fight back is honestly by winning. And we need to do that by running on authenticity, running with integrity, and running on the issues that people in the district tell us they care about. And so by listening to the voters, we learned healthcare was the number one priority for people in the district. People are drowning in student debt. People are concerned about the environment. They want their kids to have healthy, clean air and water. I mean, how crazy is that? So these are pretty common sense things that people are talking about. And, and they are the things that I believe that are willing to stand up and, and actually stand for something that we can start pushing back on these narratives, especially in a swing district like ours. Keep in mind, we gave an electoral college vote to Obama in 2008. This has been a blue dot and we can be again. Okay, great. And then one more thing, um, let's talk about the money. Um, how much money was spent in the primary? Uh, I assume you got outspent, but, but give us the details. Sure, we spent about $325,000 in the primary. Okay, so uh, bless your heart for raising that in small donations because you're just Democrat. I know you don't take any corporate PAC money. So that's a lot of right. money to raise in the middle of Nebraska on small donors. So that's actually- it is. And actually, and actually we, we didn't really even have any PAC money. So that was all individual donations. Right now, we're up to about 6,000 unique donors to this campaign, which shows how much support there is for a candidate like me. That's wonderful. And how much did, how much did your opponent spend? I think he spent about 550. 550. Okay. So he had a or that's significant how much he raised. I'd, uh, yeah, right. About $225,000 advantage on you and he still lost. Okay. That's mm -hmm. great. <laughs> great for by, us for by, by by 3 point, 3 points. <laughs> yeah. So now uh, here comes the real money. Uh, any sense of how much the Republicans are going to pour into that race to try to keep that district? Well, they've already poured over a million dollars into the district, and uh, I'm sure there'll be more than that. Although, as you mentioned, I mean, people are kind of underestimating uh, my campaign, so hopefully the Republicans will continue to do that. But uh, we think we have to raise uh, quite a bit of money, uh, mostly just to get the word out about my candidacy and what I stand for. But we're ready to do that and uh, just moving forward and talking to as many people as possible. But we can use all the support right now. Absolutely. So let's give everybody the website. It's eastmanforcongress.com. So eastmanforcongress.com. And if you're watching this later, um, we're doing this obviously live on election night. But if you're watching later, 
uh, on YouTube or Facebook. We'll have all the links, including how to volunteer or donate, uh, uh, in the description box. And the cool thing about volunteering is uh, you'll go door to door with Kara. So, <laughs> yeah, you get to come to Omaha and go door to door. It's pretty fun. I also have to just tell you that the video of you two on election night, I have watched probably 20 times. I've shown it to everybody. <laughs> so, I'm I'm really grateful. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so That's awesome. And Kara, uh, the good news is that uh, hopefully next time you're on, I won't have to worry about your first name because I'll be calling you Representative Eastman. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs>